I go to the garden alone while the dew is still on. Aren't you thankful? And he tells me I am his own. Oh, and the joy we share as we You love his presence. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. Praise his name. Open your Bibles with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, and then we're going to quickly go to Ezekiel chapter 27. And I want to share with you something different. And I believe, though, it is a, a word that everybody in this room can use. I want God to use me. I don't know about you, but I'm still available. Think of Isaiah when God needed somebody. He said, here am I, send me. So today I want to talk to you about how God wants to use you in two ways that he wants to use you. In the church, in your family, in your business, in life in general, these two areas that I'm going to talk about, God using people, you may find yourself absolutely being used mightily of God if you'll be open to what I'm going to share. The first one is in First Chronicles chapter 4 in verse 23, and this is what it says. It says, there were the potters. Everybody say the potters. And they were the ones who dwelt among plants and hedges. <laughs> there they dwelt with the king for his work. If you read that verse in its entirety that I wouldn't take time to do, 
But it lists all these important people, these powerful people, these mighty people, things that they were doing that were so uh, incredible and visible and notable and, 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 and all struck, struck things that they were able to do. And right toward the end of it, I love that the word of God notices simply the potters. And notice they dwelled among plants. They were in the background. They, if you wouldn't even know they were there, you could just see their ball cap working behind the shrubbery. Or they were, they were among the plants and the hedges, kind of hid. And then the other verse that I want to share is in Ezekiel 27, the ancients of Jabal, and the wise men thereof were in thee thy Calkers. And then he starts talking about the ships. Strange that the Bible is so detailed. Many times when we think about people that God uses, we think about the heroes, Abraham and Isaac and Samson and David, the mighty Gideon, the powerful Deborah and Esther. And there's only one of one Esther and one Deborah and one Abraham. You, you, you just don't see multitudes of people like them. Their faith can almost intimidate us. Their achievements can almost make us feel like we could never measure up to the greatness that those men and women have reached. But there are many also unsung heroes in the background, in the shadows of scriptures. As a matter of fact, anytime you see any of these great men or women that I just mentioned in the forefront, in the limelight, in the on the stage of life, doing something that is affecting history and multitudes of people, there's other people who are in the shadows and in the background that you may not be aware of. And I thank God that he uses us all to do his will. And in the text that I read, there's a potters that are mentioned that dwelt with the king without the potters, certain things would not have, he was preparing a huge party. He was having the most honored guests coming from all over the world. But he takes time to mention, the scripture does, the potters, the people who took clay and, and water and formed vessels that could be used to serve the food and make basins that would hold the candles to give light to the king's palace. And the, the, they made the the cups and the chalices that the wine would be poured in. The king would not be able to entertain the guest and change their lives with his, with his presence if it was not for people who did what they could do with their hands in the hedges and among the plants they were never in the dining room. They were never in the palace. They were never in the bright lights. They were just potters. And then he talks about ships, and he's saying that it's the caulkers. You know what a caulker is? Do you all know what a caulker is? How many of you know what a caulking is? Yeah. One who seals up, takes sealant and seals up uh, 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 sheetrock or seals up a boat if it starts to leak. And God says these people are worth mentioning and immortalizing in the scripture. Every single person is important. And God said, I want there to be two kinds of people always present in families, in homes, and in churches. I want potters. Potters. Potters who begin to take the next generation, your children, your family, and you put your hands on them. The potter's job was to find the clay. And once he found the clay, he would begin to mold that clay. He would take water and he would begin to smooth out the clay and get the lumps out and put it on the wheel. And he would begin to work and make that clay into a vessel that could be used at the king's table. Who are the potters? The potters are youth workers in the church that see young people. And man, 
their moms and dads who still believe in their teenagers when they mess up because they will do dumb things. And they'll do it over, and they'll do it over, and they'll do it over and over again. But you just keep putting your hands on them. You're the potter in their life, and you keep shaping them, and you keep molding them, and you keep pouring into them. You keep believing in them, and you keep encouraging them. Don't you give up on them. You keep loving them. You keep telling them you're special. I'm telling you, God's got his hand on your life. We're called to be potters. I thought about people who work with youth are potters. Parents are potters. I thought about these musicians are potters because a great musician, like the, all these musicians, are great musicians. They're not average. They're not normal. They're above the cut. They, can, they, they could be playing anywhere. But a great musician will see another musician and begin to use that clay and form that clay and say, now let me show you how you move from that chord to this and really fatten things up. And that song, that chord right there will fit right beautifully out of that. That's what a man did to me when I started playing the piano. I couldn't play the piano and I learned it in one summer. There was a man in my dad's church who played piano and he, he just saw the talent. He saw I could play the sax and he knew I had music in me. And he said, let me teach you some chords and he showed me three chords and then he showed me one song and I played that and he kept pouring in and said, now take it here and now let's go to another key. Let me show you how to do this and show you. How. And it's amazing how that we can raise up a whole nother generation of singers, a whole nother generation of worshipers, a whole nother generation of musicians. You gotta do it. We gotta do it. We're potters. I thought about business people, that entrepreneur spirit. You don't have to be in the tribe of Judah to be a potter. But what about, what about entrepreneurs? What about people out there who have made it? What about people out there who have built businesses that, that are astounding and, and you've got hundreds of employees and God has done great things in your life, but you also ought to be looking and maybe it's in your own family. Use that gift, that amazing, you think different, you know things that somebody else, you just know it instinctively communicate that, use that, become a potter and pour into them and then tell them your story and don't forget, don't forget the only reason I made it was because I started giving and tithing and honoring God and he began to open the windows of heaven and he blessed me and he favored me. Oh, this isn't a commercial for money. I'm not asking, we, we're not gonna take an offering. You have to give it if you wanna give it. I'm telling you, that's how you shape the next generation for greatness is a potter. Potters brought light to the king's house. The potter didn't seem very important, but without the position of the potter, there would be no party in the king's house. And somebody said, I don't want, I don't have to have the limelight. I'll work behind the hedges but I don't want the party to go out in the king's house. Too many people need to eat from his table, the bread and the wine, the body of Christ. I want that party to keep going. You know, when you get my age, I don't even care if I preach some big conference. I get invites all the time, but I'd rather raise up two or three anointed preachers like Javon and different ones, and I'd rather see them get up before 20,000 people and preach more than me. Why? Because I've done it, but I get more joy out of seeing them do it. Hallelujah. I don't know where I'm going with this sermon, but I feel like shouting right now. Does anybody believe in the next generation? Does anybody believe God has his hand on the next generation? Does anybody believe the young men will see visions and the old men will dream dreams and together they will begin to make vessels of honor meet for the master's use? You see, they'll do dumb things. but we can't afford to lose one of our young people. 
And if we're not going to lose them, we're going to have to have some people that can't just come and hear from the preacher on the sermon and then go away. Somebody's got to be touching their life all week long, shaping their mentality, shaping their spirit, shaping and molding their th way of thinking. Potters get involved. Potters get involved in the life of the youth and the next generation. Mold them. God's looking for potters, dads. God's looking for potters, mom. God's looking for potters. A potter says, I, I can't let you go out in that. Let me shape you a little bit in that area. Let me, let me help you a little bit. You know, those friends, let, let, let me, I want to know who, let me look at your phone. Let me see your phone. What you, you ain't got nothing to hide, do you? What are you doing? You're shaping a holy vessel. And then he said, in Ezekiel, he started talking about beautiful ships. I didn't have time to read it. He said they were expensive and gorgeous and beautiful ships. We call them yachts. He said the sails were so expensive, they were made out of material, the best material from Egypt. And the, and the boards of the ship came were the cedars from Lebanon that had been imported and all oh, these gorgeous ships. And he's talking about the captain and he's talking about the pilot, which is the captain, talking about all these powerful, important people. And then he says, but he also appointed caulkers <laughs> down in the hull of the ship. Nobody sees them. They're not up there with the wheel doing Instagram pictures. They're down in the bottom of the ship and they're caulkers. Y'all know what a caulker is? Now they told me, I don't, I had never used one of these and I was trying so hard to get that part off. I wanted to illustrate. I was going to shoot it if it would shoot. I didn't know what it would do. And they said, you cannot do that because if you want, if you want to ruin your outfit, I said, oh no, Sharice will kill me. Don't do that. And this is, and this is what we're supposed to be too. Because it doesn't matter how beautiful the ship is. It doesn't matter how beautiful the marriage is. It doesn't matter how beautiful the home is. It doesn't matter how beautiful of a life you've built. You better learn that you have to have caulking. Because, because they understood the ship is beautiful and it's, what we build is incredible but it has to be maintained. And so they had people down in the bottom of the ship and all they did was look at the cedars of Lebanon and they looked at those boards and every once in a while it would begin to seep with water and they would caulk it, seal it. They would seal it up from leaking. They would seal it up because they understood that if the ship starts taking on water, it doesn't matter how beautiful it looks outwardly. If it's leaking on the inside, it's a matter of time before it goes down. The caulkers were men, wise men in the ship. And they said, oh no, this ship is going somewhere. And so I, I, need, to, I need to stop the seeping of things from coming in. That's what happened to Noah. God told him to pitch it, called it pitch it. Pitch the ark on the outside and the inside. In other words, I want you to pitch it. I want you to caulk it on the outside to keep some bad stuff from coming in. But I also want you to caulk it on the inside to keep the good stuff from going out. We ought to have each other's back. We ought not to sit down and be okay with hearing what everybody's saying. And it ought to be true with words and it ought to be true online. I want to tell you something. You need to be careful what you say and you need to be careful what you listen to. Some of you are, have some haters on Instagram or on, on Reddit or whatever and you need to get you a Holy Ghost caulking gun and you need to just say, you know what? I'm beautiful. I look good. I don't care what they're saying about me. They may be bringing up my past, but I'm going to caulk it. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say, thanks be unto God. I don't have to give myself to that. Don't, 
Don't listen to it. Don't read it. You're a new creation in Christ. The old things have passed away. Caulk it. Somebody shout and say it's the truth. Turn to somebody and say, you need to caulk what God's given you in this revival. I'm not going to lose it. You can lose the worship if you want to. You can lose the consciousness of God if you want to. Those of you who got touched in this revival, it can just, you'll just seep it out if you let it. But if you get you a good word and you get you some desire, you can caulk it. And you can keep what God gave you. I really believe God wants to use you this year. I really believe that God wants to place His hand. Some of you are going to help mold and help form even your own family, your own children. You have the hands of a potter and a spirit of a potter and an anointing to shape and to mold and to make that vessel into what God has called it to be. And if you're listening to me right now and you don't know Jesus Christ is your Savior, why don't you start off right? Why don't you start this week off by saying, Jesus Christ, I love you. Just say it. I love you. I know you. I know who you are, and I surrender. I believe in you. Wash me in the blood of Calvary. Cleanse me and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. I want to be Spirit-filled. I want to walk in victory this year. I want to walk in the strength of God. I want the wisdom and favor of God on me and my family. And then say this, Lord, use me. Use me. I know you want to use me. And I want to help put people's lives back together and keep them in a place of victory. Use me to bless others this year in Jesus' name. You know, that's a prayer that's right in the will of God. You don't even have to worry if that's God's will. It's His will that not any should perish. That includes you. It's His will to save you. It's His will to use you. And I thank God for that. Before I go, I really want to thank you for supporting this ministry financially. We can't preach the good news to over 200 nations every week without your support. And we can't create and produce all the faith-building materials and the tremendous outreaches that we are able to sow a lot of resources all over the world because of you. The latest project is the Eshkol Resilience Center. It's being created to help treat Jewish victims who are suffering mentally and going through psychological trauma due to the attacks, the continual bombardments and terror that they have faced. It is the number one need that they said they have right now. We pray about what God would have you do to help us rebuild that city that the enemy tried to destroy in the Holy Land. I can only tell you when you get interested in what God loves and what God says He cares about. Like projects in Israel, God will pour out His blessings like you have never seen before. So here's my announcer to tell you how you can be a part of a miracle in Israel. Over the past five years, friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries have worked to help build an amazing Kingdom Play School, four fortified bomb shelters, and a fire station for the Eshkol region in southern Israel near Gaza. Thankfully, we can report that these shelters and projects played a vital role in protecting Israeli families from this terror attack. Together, we have stood shoulder to shoulder with the brave people of these communities for years. That's why we're partnering with the Jewish National Fund to help build the Jensen Franklin Media Ministries Eshkol Resilience Center. Here, Jewish men, women, and children who suffer from PTSD, anxiety disorders, and other emotional trauma will find state-of-the-art facilities and treatments in light of the devastating circumstances here in Ashkol on October 7th, the need for psychological support is critical more than ever. Thank you, Pastor Jensen, and all your partners. We know that you have our back yesterday, today, and in the days to come. Thank you.
Let's stand united with Israel, build resilience, and bring comfort to those who need it most. Call or go online today to see how you can get involved. This program has been sponsored in part by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.